On March uh, 25th, 2020, something fairly significant for me happened. We're coming up to the anniversary, but it's not exactly a celebration. Almost one year ago, I was asked to prepare a week of devotional thoughts to be posted on YouTube and Facebook by my church, the Salvation Army Barry Citadel. I think the idea was primarily to build up our sense of community during a time when we could not meet in person. Each week since that first posting has seen different members of our congregation sharing their insights. Certainly, they have given us food for thought, and the menu has been as diverse as the life experiences of those who've been presenting. Here we are, almost one year later, and again, it is my privilege to share with you. Who could have imagined that we would still be living in isolation? This time last year, I, like others, thought it would be all under control by the summer at the latest. Even in the fall of 2020, as news of effective vaccines emerged and encouraged us, we began to anticipate worshiping together for Christmas. Then the second wave hit, and now we are being warned to anticipate a third wave and perhaps even more dangerous. What have we learned since the pandemic started. Actually, quite a lot of new skills, apparently. Remember last spring when you couldn't find yeast in the stores because everyone was baking their own bread? My knitting and crocheting friends tell me that yarn is still in short supply. And in the summer, I was talking to a contractor who shared his frustration with the fact that lumber suitable for building decks was in very short supply because everyone, forced to stay home, became a DIY carpenter. Do it yourself. Do you remember the empty shelves? We all started to look for ways to provide for ourselves. We just never knew when the supply chain might collapse. I thought about the morning devotionals I posted. Short little bits, um, you might call them uh, encouraging bites of scripture, lots of sweet promises full of hope, sort of timbits for Christians. Have you heard the proverb, and it's not in the Bible, give a man a fish and you feed him for a day, teach him to fish and you feed him for a lifetime? Two weeks ago, Jeff Groves did a superb job of laying the foundation for new believers or recommitted believers in his devotional thoughts. He talked about the advice given him to read the Bible. First, the Gospel of John, then the other Gospels, so that he would meet Jesus in the pages of history. I used to teach history. Primary sources are things that are written by people who were there at the time. And so when we read the Bible, we are reading a primary source for revealing the nature of God. It's really important for Christian growth, but not just reading it. If you think of it as food, then it is chewing on it, digesting it, letting the words change our lives so that we live to please our Father in heaven. This week, I would like to work with you through one of the songs. I will introduce some different approaches. I want us all to become do-it-yourselfers in finding God's word and will for us. And we will use Psalm 73. I challenge you to come prepared to try some new ways to gather your spiritual food. You will need a Bible, some paper and a pen and an open mind. In closing, I want you to cl close your eyes and listen as I read Psalm 73. And then I want you to think about two questions. The first one is, does this psalm and the experience of the writer make you think of anything in our world? And the second question is, have you ever felt like the writer? And then this will be a little different, but I'd like you to feel free to share 
what comes to your mind, writing a comment so that as each day goes along, we can all share. I firmly believe that when a group of believers looks into God's word, their shared experience enriches the experience. So Psalm 72, I'm going to read it. Close your eyes, relax, think about whether it makes you think of anything that's happening in our world, and also think about whether you've ever felt like this. Surely God is good to Israel, to those who are pure in heart, but as for me, my feet had almost slipped. I had nearly lost my foothold, for I envied the arrogant when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. They have no struggles. Their bodies are healthy and strong. They are free from common human burdens. They are not plagued by human ills. Therefore, pride is their necklace. They clothe themselves with violence. From their callous hearts comes iniquity. Their evil imaginations have no limits. They scoff and speak with malice. With arrogance they threaten oppression. Their mouths lay claim to heaven and their tongues take possession of the earth. Therefore their people turn to them and drink up waters in abundance. They say, how would God know? Does the Most High know anything? This is what the wicked are like always free of care, they go on amassing wealth. Surely in vain I have kept my heart pure and have washed my hands in innocence. All day long I have been afflicted and every morning brings new punishments. If I had spoken out like that, I would have betrayed your children. When I tried to understand all this, it troubled me deeply till I entered the sanctuary of God. Then I understood their final destiny. Surely you place them on slippery ground. You cast them down to ruin. How suddenly are they destroyed, completely swept away by terrors. They are like a dream when one awakes. When you arise, Lord, you will despise them as fantasies. When my heart was grieved and my spirit embittered, I was senseless and ignorant. I was a brute beast before you. Yet I am always with you. You hold me by my right hand. You guide me with your counsel, and afterward you will take me into glory. Whom have I in heaven but you? And earth has nothing I desire besides you. My flesh and heart may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Those who are far from you will perish. You destroy all who are unfaithful to you. But as for me, it is good to be near God. I have made the Sovereign Lord my refuge. I will tell of all your deeds. Amen. Hope to see you tomorrow. God bless.